it may seem unusual to think to combine the words vocation and grandparents or elderly people because we often use vocation in the terms of something meant for young people when young people are determining what lifestyle they're going to live uh, what vocation what work what job what field they're going to enter into grandparents of course have often uh, retired and left those things behind them. But we know from salvation history, from our knowledge of the Old Testament and the New Testament, that grandparents and seniors have important roles to play in salvation history. If we think of Abraham and Sarah, who were elderly when God reached out and spoke to them. We think of Joachim and Anne, the parents of uh, Mary, the grandparents of Jesus in that way, and of their role in salvation history and to carry out what God called upon them to do. And so even in our own age, in today's day and age, grandparents especially can be, can realize that they have a vocation that God calls upon them even now, even though they may be up in years, even though they may not have the physical strength, even though their health may not be uh, top quality, yet God can still call on them to play an important role in faith formation and faith support of those around them, whether it's their own family members or those in the community and church community who have contact with them. So certainly to be a grandparent, to be an elder in our society and faith communities now is a God-given vocation. And in, in our city of Winnipeg, in the three dioceses working together, um, as we have for many years around this National Week of Life and Family uh, in mid-May there, um, well, we've taken up the, the message, the theme, the thought, you know, grandparents and the elderly, a legacy to cherish. So it's a living legacy to cherish now, and that a legacy that will continue giving and giving life, giving meaning, giving hope, um, giving joy, giving healing. And, and so I would say, I would invite people to just um, continue to share the memories and the stories whether the grandparents and elderly are passed on or still here. Cherish, cherish. And um, again, to never leave the elderly alone um, or lonely or, you know, abandoned. The fourth commandment, honor thy father and mother, that wasn't meant to say to little kids, you should obey your mom and dad. It was to say to adults trekking through the desert, 40 years, don't leave your parents, even if their mind goes, it's, it's in scripture, don't leave your parents to die by the side of the road as you continue traveling. That's what honor your father and mother means. And so I would say yes, that we honor each person's moment in life and moment in the journey and uh, we make sure to keep those family ties strong. We, um, we sacrifice and leave aside the screen for a while or the television show or the hockey game or the whatever and uh, we rejoice in one another. And some of those who will help us rejoice the most are the grandparents and the elderly, um, as we show them honor, respect, appreciation. I want to say to our grandparents during this National Week of the Life of the Family and our elderly, have patience with the younger generation. Uh, but also have patience, understand where they're coming from. It's a different generation. 
uh, don't become frustrated because they may not be going to church every Sunday and things like that, right? But also be truthful in what you know to be right and what you know to be true. But present it in a way which is loving and joyful so that the faith becomes something attractive to the younger people. Show them that practicing as a Catholic, trying to live good moral lives, is something positive and something worth doing. And tell lots of stories. Tell lots of stories, because that's one thing that really intrigues young people, is the stories that come from their family tradition. It's powerful and very important. Mm -hmm.